Why choose to go Africa? The most significant reason is the money is so good. The pay is satisfying. It's too appealing. Just imagine a fresh college graduate earning tens of thousands of yuan per month. The allure is extraordinarily strong. Ordinary Chinese workers in Africa typically earn a monthly salary of 10,000 yuan, a sum that they can save entirely as personal expenses are minimal. This is quite different from working in China because the company covers food and accommodation costs, including round-trip airfare. Additionally, the cost of living in Africa is extremely low, so there isn't much need for personal spending. Momo, a master's graduate from last year, is now in the Democratic Republic of Congo, serving as a recruiter for a Chinese private communication enterprise. Before graduation, Momo had been job hunting for an entire year, with the highest salary offering coming from Africa. The company offered an annual salary between four hundred and ten thousand to four hundred eighty thousand RMB for master's graduate, which is two to three times that of equivalent positions in China. According to lively discussions on the internet, coming to Africa to start a career at an early age indeed has many advantages. First and foremost, even if a Chinese individual's foreign language skills are not top notch, as long as they are brave enough to speak up, translation softwares can handle communication issues. In this way, after three years, an individual's English progress will certainly be noticeable. It's like getting the most cost-effective English practice. At the same time, one can save money. In Africa, one will encounter merchants from various countries, broadening their horizons. The rate of growth in Africa is rapid, with one year equating to five years of China's growth. Moreover, the pace of life in Africa is much slower, which naturally eases your mind and body. Most Chinese people in Africa are in business, and there are plenty of opportunities with a bunch of bosses and a lot of money. The key is whether one can choose the right person at the right project to make a fortune. Thus, about one hundred and fifty thousand such fresh graduates from China have set foot on this enigmatic continent, Africa. They are scattered among more than three thousand five hundred Chinese companies in over twenty Sino-African cooperative industrial parks, including tech giants like Huawei, ZTE, Opal, DGI, infrastructure builders like China Construction and China Railway, as well as numerous private trading companies. In China, a group of French major university students stand at the crossroads of life. The Communist Party, under the guise of elevating the burden of primary and secondary school students, has reduced education in Western languages, leading to fewer and fewer domestic French teaching positions. Meanwhile, due to the shift in the industrial chain, the already reduced foreign trade orders continue to decline, leaving virtually no job vacancies. However, in this predicament, Africa, a vast continent, opens up new employment opportunities for them. A French graduate from Shanghai facing job opportunities in Africa did not hesitate in the slightest. He firmly seized the opportunity, saying, "As long as the income supports my life, I am willing to go. If it's a year, it's a year. If it's half a year, it's half a year. After all, who can predict the future in such a harsh employment environment in China?" His words express the true feelings of many of his peers. An excellent graduate with a major in French, job hunting in Beijing, saw classmates who had successfully entered the Ministry of Commerce for simultaneous interpretation, but ultimately couldn't stay in Beijing for various reasons. After sending out five hundred resumes and receiving few responses domestically, opportunities in Africa quickly came calling. This top student decisively chose Africa. Whether it's the less academically gifted or the top students, the first challenge they face upon arriving in Africa is adapting to local English and French accents. One student with poor French grades strangely resonated with the locals due to his non-standard French. They were curious about each other, and he made some African friends through this. A group of boys and girls who are proficient in French all sighed. After experiencing their work careers in Africa, 
Compared to the tense and fierce domestic job market, Africa is like a buffer zone in their professional career. Perhaps Africa is not the best choice in their heart, but it's definitely not their worst at this stage. Even the parents who were initially worried agreed with their children's choices, considering the intense job competition domestically and the frequent occurrence of corporate layoffs. At the moment, they set off. For Africa, a female top student posted a picture of the African savanna in her WeChat moments with the caption "Leaving a place of trouble." This is their story, a tale of seeking new opportunities and distancing themselves from domestic employment pressure. Beyond the allure of increased income and the desire to avoid competition at home, some people are drawn to Africa due to a thirst of exploring different worlds. Take Zhang Lang Lang as an example. She used to work for an e-commerce company in China, but the allure of Algeria's beautiful coastlines and White House captured her imagination and beckoned her to journey there. Now Zhang Lang Lang has switched to a better Chinese company in Algeria, not only providing full boarding but also with one month's paid leave for every few months of work, and the company even pays for her ticket back to China. Therefore, she is very satisfied with her current life in Algeria. A Jihu user named "Don't Say You're Unaware of Dawn" has continually worked in three Chinese-funded enterprises in Africa for a full seven years. In his eyes, Africa is a land brimming with endless possibilities, particularly in the decade following 2000. Chinese companies took over numerous infrastructure construction projects. Business opportunities sprouted like bamboo shoots after the spring rain. Back then, if one had the resolve and followed through with action, whether the individual was operating a grocery store, supermarket, hotel, or restaurant, it wasn't difficult to achieve an annual income in the millions. However, after the epidemic, Africa's population has decreased considerably. Today's Africa presents a picture of desolation, with every industry seemingly overwhelmed and struggling. However, for companies like Huawei and other state-owned enterprises affiliated with Chinese Communist Party, the salaries they offer are still very satisfying. The lowest level employees start with an annual income of three hundred thousand yuan, which has increased to five hundred thousand yuan within a few years. This does not even include a daily travel allowance of a hundred U.S. dollars. Therefore, for those from modest backgrounds, as long as they fulfill their responsibilities in Africa, purchasing a house upon their return to China after a number of years would no longer be a mere dream. However, going to Africa is not an easy matter. A Chinese individual needs to face many problems, such as their passport being withheld by their boss in Africa, the boss absconding, high work pressure, and even backward medical conditions. Moreover, in the central region of Africa, especially in Nigeria, the living conditions for Chinese people are quite difficult. Police often impose random fines, and the only way to avoid this problem is by hiring police to drive cars. In this country, kidnappings of Chinese occur frequently. Large Chinese companies have the ability to pay ransoms of millions, but small merchants often cannot afford it. They have to negotiate with the kidnappers, hoping to reduce the amount of ransom. Once five Chinese employees were kidnapped, and because the company could not afford to pay all the ransom, they had to raise funds from the community. This is a risk and challenges that people working in Africa might face. However, from another perspective, people in this barren land are full of joy. Residents live a simple and contented life, with banana rice as their staple food and walking as their main mode of transportation. However, as long as you walk in the streets, you can see their radiant smiles and joy everywhere. This is in stark contrast to the tired, worried, and hurried people in the Beijing subway. A Chinese employee working in Uganda painted a vivid picture. Huawei's local branch is full of Chinese employees. They are physically and mentally exhausted due to overtime, and even willing to accept pay cuts in order to change jobs. In contrast, the lives of African locals are completely different. They enjoy plenty of holidays. Their work attitude seems relaxed, but their pace of life is slower. Full of tranquility and contentment, they don't have the same relentlessness as the Chinese. One of her local colleagues has to walk three hours to work every day, and then walk three hours back home after work. 
yet he has never expressed any complaints about this. For him, having a decent job is precious, and he is happy because of this. These are people who, despite the hardship of life, can maintain happiness. In contrast, life for Chinese people seems more difficult. In China, people plan their lives meticulously, saving incessantly with hopes of a more prosperous future. Meanwhile, in Africa, individuals enjoy their leisure time with music and beer after work. Their attitudes towards life are freer and more relaxed. One might wonder. What would this communist-led country look like if all Chinese people embraced life as Africans do? This is a disruptive thought and a profound reflection. Across the vast land of Africa, some Chinese have chosen to follow their aspirations. For instance, a young postgraduate who realized the frequent overtime and monotonous life at a design institute did not quench his thirst for life. He resolutely came to Africa and started his own business. Now he has a team of more than twenty people and has become a successful contractor. Take Pen, a thirty-six-year-old who arrived in Algeria in twenty eleven at the age of twenty-four and started working as a translator for a Chinese private enterprise. His initial salary was seven thousand RMB a month, much higher than two thousand six hundred RMB he was making back in China. In 2015, he switched jobs to China Construction Second Engineering Bureau Materials Procurement Department in Algeria, where his salary increased to 13,000 RMB. After a year, having established his social network, he started his own business in 2016, co-founding a construction company with local partners and increasing his annual income to 500,000 RMB. By 2020, his annual income had reached 2 million RMB. Peng feels that despite Africa's relatively poor environment and frequent robberies targeting the Chinese, there are much more opportunities compared to China, and the salaries are higher. He married a local Algerian who always supported him regardless of how much money he made. A quality hard to find in Chinese women. This he believes could be a result of the Communist Party's brainwashing education, which puts immense pressure. On the Chinese, forcing them to strive for perfection, a rather unhealthy phenomenon. China's existing foreign policy has sparked widespread attention across the globe and triggered a series of profound economic issues. The global industrial chain and the overseas transfer of foreign capitals have caused many factories in China to shut down, leading to a significant loss of job opportunities and a decrease in domestic corporate profits. Nevertheless, Chinese enterprises in Africa have not been affected. Every year, millions of college graduates in China can't find work. A portion of these graduates find relief in employment opportunities in Africa. However, this is only a temporary fix. The situation in Africa bears some resemblance to China in the 1950s and even poorer. Chinese companies are vigorously exploiting this potential market, but given the path of China's domestic development over the past forty years, we must take a cautious attitude towards China's involvement in Africa and contemplate the possible impacts on Africa's culture and society. If Chinese companies operate in Africa in the same manner and turn Africa into a place similar to the present China, then where else could future Chinese college graduates go? Some analysts ardently hope that Africans will not become political tools, as some Chinese people have, making endless sacrifices. They also hope that the CCP will not achieve its goals in Africa, as it has in China, amassing a vast amount of wealth for itself at the expense of African people. However, the CCP's future actions in Africa and their potential impacts remain unpredictable. People can only stay alert, hoping that the international community remains just and fair, ensuring that everyone can enjoy their deserved dignity and rights. Before we end this video, if you like our content, we hope that you will share this video, subscribe to our channel, and give us a like for our efforts.